What is going on guys, welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to talk about Tron. Namely, we're going to take a look at their source code and see how the software development progress is moving. Is it even moving at all? Do they have developers? Are developers doing their job? And so on and so forth. Now, this video is mainly for people who have very little or no technical expertise. And the reason why I think this video is so important is because if you invest in cryptocurrencies, you invest in ICOs, you are investing in tech startups. You are investing in tech businesses. They have a white paper. Now they need to prove that they can build it. They actually need to implement their technical solution. So for you as an investor, it is crucial to be able to go to GitHub and just get a feeling, just get a sense of how the progress is moving. Of course, if you do not know programming, if you're not a technical person yourself, you will not understand everything, but I will give you some metrics you can use in order to get some kind of sense for the progress. And before we start, I want to remind you that if you go to academy.ivanotech.com, you can buy my online course that will launch in February. And if you buy it now during the pre-sale, you'll get more than 50% off. And in the course, you learn all about Bitcoin, all about Ethereum, how they work under the hood. You learn about mining and consensus algorithms. You learn all about the industrial use cases of blockchain technology. And you'll also learn about ICOs and how to assess ICOs. That being said, guys, let's get into it and look at Tron's source code. So let me give you a crash course in GitHub by using Tron as an example. First of all, you have to find the GitHub repository of your project that you're interested in. And most likely you will see it on their website. So for example, here in Tron, we have GitHub link up here and all the cryptocurrency projects should have a GitHub link on their page somewhere. So just look for a GitHub link and you go to their GitHub link and uh, you will end up in their GitHub organization. So as you can see, we have Tron protocol. This is the name of this GitHub organization. And you see the repositories they have in this organization. So currently they only have two repositories. You also see how many people are in this organization. So there are 15 people. Something you have to keep in mind is that this number is completely irrelevant to you when you are doing your analysis because number of people listed here doesn't mean anything really because I can create an organization on GitHub and just invite my friends and my family, everyone, and have a thousand people showing up here. What really matters is who is actually pushing code, who is developing, who is working on this. And we are going to take a look at uh, that later on in this video. And so when you end up in the GitHub uh, organization page on the GitHub organization page for your project, your number one task here is to realize which repository is the most important, which repositories is the most interesting and is the most central in this project. Now for this project, it is extremely easy because you only have two repositories. The first one is called Java Tron, as we can see, and it is the Java implementation of the Tron white paper. Something, something we have to keep in mind is that the white paper in itself is just a protocol. It is just a blueprint and you can use any language to implement that protocol. And as an example, in Ethereum, we have uh, a, uh, an implementation in Go programming language. We also have another implementation in Python. So Currently, we only have a Java implementation here in Tron, and hopefully in the future, we'll see other programming languages implemented as well. Uh, also, we have the second repository called Wiki, and this is just some information about the project, about the architecture, some documentation, and all projects should have some kind of wiki. So for example, if I'm a new developer and I want to get started, I want some information, I can take a look here, I can read about how the structure works and so on and so forth. But for you as uh, an investor, when you analyze GitHub repositories, GitHub projects, the most important thing for you to do is to find the most central repository in the organization. And in our case, it is Javatron. So we had to, to Javatron. When you enter a GitHub uh, repository, in this case, Javatron, here you can see the source code. You can actually browse and see different folders and the files in, in different folders and so on and so forth, if you're interested in that. 
uh, if you scroll, you'll see some information and this can differ between different projects, dif between different repositories, exactly what you see here. But in this case, we see some information on how to install and start developing this, um, this project. If I, for example, would like to participate and code as a developer. But so what you should pay attention to as an investor when you analyze this, uh, this repository, you should pay attention to the commits and to contributors. Let's talk about the commits. First of all, what is a commit? Well, when a programmer does something, for example, develops a new feature or fixes a bug or develops new functionality, the programmer needs to push his or her change to the code base. And to do that, they create a commit. So if we go to commits here, you see that we have uh, many commits and each commit is a change to the code base, something that has happened, some update to the code of this project. And each commit also has a message. And this is because when I change something, I want to add a good message so that my colleague, uh, colleagues in the future, for example, let's imagine that I leave the company and I change the project or something, and then someone new comes in and wants to replace me. Well, they should be able to easily pick up my work by looking at my commits and see what I have done. Also, if there is a bug in the future and someone needs to understand my code that they didn't write themselves, well, they need to understand my thought process and the way I was thinking when I created the code. So commit messages are ex uh, extremely important. Something else that is interesting is that you can actually take a look at what changed for line by line in the source code. So if you click on this identifier for each commit, you can actually see what, what has changed. And uh, you see that some lines have been deleted. The red lines is what ha has been deleted. And here on the left, you see the original version and on the right you see the updated version. So as you can see in this commit we deleted these lines and uh, we added uh, some comments, we added some lines. So this is a very simple commit, just cleaning up some unused imports and creating a better, uh, a better description of, of this function, uh, of this constructor. So uh, this is how commits work. You create a message and you push your code and you as an investor, if you're interested in the project, you can go here and in real time see what is going on. And you see that this commit was only sent seven hours ago. So whenever someone pushes something, you can see it here. And also to get some kind of um, measure for the professionalism of the team, you can take a look at their commit messages. So, I mean, this is a metric you can have. And as, as I told you, the commit messages should be such that the person in the future should be able to understand what you were doing. So in this particular repository, there are both bad and good commit messages. So for example, Sean Robbins normally has good commit messages. Sean uh, Robbins describes what he did. For example, removed DB exist logic and now explain why he removed it. So it is easy to understand what is happening. Then we have some examples of bad commit messages as well. For example, I saw one here, which is just fix or fix conf or fix. This is not very useful for programmers in the future. So this is, this is a metric you can have. Uh, this can work as a metric for professionalism. And as you can see, this commit that only has fix as commit message actually is, uh, okay, so this one is actually not big, but I saw another one which, which also was just fix. Maybe it was this one. Uh, so this one is also just fix. And this one, as you can see, is pretty significant. There are several files and uh, pretty, pretty significant changes. We add the file as well. So uh, most often what you want to see is commit messages like this. And you can see that different people have their own style. So maybe this person is just not used to writing good commit messages, but that person can still be a good programmer. But as I mentioned, just as a metric, don't take it too seriously, but just as a metric, you can have the way people write commits uh, in, in their commit messages. So that is commits. You can go and you can go all the way back until they started developing and, uh, and see what has been going on. So here we have a bunch of bad commit messages. Uh, all right, so moving on, we, took a look at commits, 
let's take a look at the contributors. As you remember, I mentioned that uh, the number of people you see on the front page when you go to uh, a GitHub organization doesn't really matter. However, what does matter are the contributors in each repository. And as we can see, uh, we have different people and we see how much they have contributed to the project. And uh, we see that uh, this person has been quite active. This person has been quite active as well. And you can see the number of commits they've done. So this person has 33 commits. This person has 31 commits. You also see the number of lines they have added and number of lines they have deleted. So commits are these bundled changes and you can have several commits, but this also gives you an indication of how much actual code a person produced. So in this case, we see that Sasaxi has pushed the most lines if you're speaking line, line by line. Also, something interesting is that this project started in December. So in December, we see Sasaxi pushing a lot of code. That being said, I wouldn't say that this project started in December. This repository on GitHub started in December, but as we can see, this person pushed some significant commits. So the first commits on this project, let me see if I can go back in time. Uh, they basically added a lot of code in the first commit. If we just take a look, take a look here and look at the commit, yeah, so it is a lot of code in the first commit. So this project, I, I would say, didn't start uh, didn't start this late. I mean, in uh, on December the 17th, because the first commit was a huge one with a lot of code. So they must have been developing this uh, way before December, but they started using GitHub and they and they open sourced the project on December 17th. And here you can see the different um, time time windows. So for example, if we want to see the first week of the project, I mean, this project has only been around for uh, a couple of weeks on GitHub, so it's hard to give get some good metrics, but if we just have a window, you can play with this window right here and you can see who developed when. So if this would be several years, as it is in, in Bitcoin, for example, you can actually slide this window and see who was the most active developer uh, during different times uh, in the project. But because this project is only a couple of weeks old, it is hard to, <laughs> hard to say anything. So contributors is definitely something you should take a look at. It will give you a sense of how many people are developing this project and how many people are working on this project. So in this particular example, I would say that this project has two main developers, this Ko Kong Li Du and Sasak Si. Those, <laughs> sorry if I butchered the names, but those are the two main developers. Then we have a bunch of smaller contributors, but if someone only developed a hundred lines or 600, even 600 lines, it, it is so little and insignificant that it is hard to call them developers of this project. However, something we have to keep in mind is that this first commit we saw here was a huge commit. So it might very well be the case that they all developed it before they pushed it. But this will give you an indication of which people are developing a project. And the project you are looking at might look very different from this particular project we're looking at right now. So we've talked about the commits, the commit contents, commit messages, about the contributors. Finally, I want to give you uh, another metric and that is the issues. So if you go here and you take a look at the issues and uh, what we're looking for here is activity. We want to see activity in the issues. And the thing is, if I am a developer and I want to help develop the Tron project and I find some bug or something that I don't understand or something is not working, well, I can go here and I can create an issue and report my struggles or report the bug and so on and so forth. And so what is important is that I get some kind of reply. So if I want to help, and I'm stuck, I need some kind of reply. Or it might be the case that it is a user that uses the software and they find some kind of bug. Well, they can also go here and create an issue. So what you're looking for here is basically uh, so that each of these issues have some kind of reply. So if we go, for example, here, consider passing databases. So someone gives some kind of tip 
uh, to the project and then we have this person asking so this is good uh, or if we go and take here we have 18 comments so this is also interesting so as you can see someone has some questions and the questions get get asked get answered <laughs> get answered but then we have some without any any comments for example this let's take a look so here we have some comments from a person and he received or she some thumbs up from the from the team so basically what you're looking for here is that if there is some kind of issue it should get answers because this is a way you can also indicate that the project is active and someone is actually reading this someone is actually uh, caring about helping people and caring about building a community a developer community around this project so very important another aspect of course you need to keep in mind is the time span of the project so Tron is an extremely extremely ambitious project with huge visions for the future with uh, both developing a platform for decentralized applications and personal ICOs and content uh, in, in a decentralized way and so on and so forth so the task is enormous and their time span is 10 years it's about 10 years that they want this is on a 10 year development plan and of course it just started a few weeks ago on uh, on github so we can't be too harsh with, with a project such as tron but still keep your eyes open take a look look at all the other projects you have try to get some kind of feeling some kind of uh, sense of progress or not progress <laughs> if no one is developing anything so guys like this video smash the bell button so that you're always up to date and subscribe if you are a new viewer and you like cryptocurrencies i myself am a software developer and i'll see you guys next time